with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're out in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and well, I like to tell a good story with the guys, and this one, well, these barn finds, it's unbelievable. So I've got Tyler and Robbie, and I'll grab the camera. If you wanna to come to Carlisle events and see some amazing cars, take a look in the description, and here we go. So Tyler, come come with me together, yep. both of you guys. Now these cars have been together since how long? Since 1975, they've been parked side by side in a barn. Uh, and but, this is the first time they're out? Yeah, first time in about a year and a half. Uh, we got a mechanical, uh, the Petty Blue four-speed car, the engine was seized up. Uh, we were able to get it freed. <laughs> uh, we put, did a lot of brake work on them all mechanical and driving. So Robbie's got the blue one, Tyler's got the orange one, and let's just start with the orange one. So the orange one, when you talk about barn find, I love this. Look at this. Even the dirt is from 1975. Take a look at the paw prints from being in the barn. Now, clearly you can see it's a Superbird, but the front end is a, either a GTX or a Roadrunner. What happened here? It was crashed in 1975 when it was about uh, three weeks to a month old. It was in a uh, racing accident, actually. And, and didn't one of the police officers, when you started to do... I, uh, who the I did the research, actually, trying to figure out who the original owner of the car was. Yeah. I actually found it by uh, the door sticker on Let's the door. Let's take a look. <laughs> look at this thing. It was actually serviced in Johnstown, PA, at Berkey Bowles Auto and Towing. And uh, the guy that owns the shop is in his, his 80s, and I contacted the shop owner, and he gave me the name of the original owner. Yeah, and then what happened? Let's uh, pull those keys out just because uh, yep. we want to hear you. There we go. Yep. So and I'll show the car as you're talking about it. So go ahead. So you're searching for the owner. So I talked to... Uh, 75 Junior. electrical duct tape, maybe? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I talked to uh, Junior up at Berkey Bowles, and he uh, explained to me how he was no the road car. And explained to me that he knew who the original owner of the car was. He did. What and, did you uh, think when you heard that? Oh, I couldn't believe it. I, it just things don't happen like that after a car sat for 45 years. Right. So uh, we went on from uh, Junior. He said, "Well, I'll run up after work. I know where the the kid used to live." And I said, "Kid, you mean 60 years old or 65 yeah. years older?" He uh, he stopped up at the, the house, and uh, they answered the door and said that he has not lived there in 35, 40 years. <laughs> that the last loan known location of him was out towards Pittsburgh. So uh, keep talking. I'm going to show the car. I tried to do talking. an address look up and got dead ends out towards Pittsburgh. And here, the original owner lives seven miles away from where the car was parked for 45 years. Wow. So then, what happened? So, uh, you tried calling and that didn't tried, work. Tried calling, the number was disconnected. So, one day after work, since it's so close local to where I live, uh, I drove up to this house and I beat on the door. <laughs> and uh, I got, got a gentleman answered the door by the name of Ricky. I looked at him, I said, Did you happen to have an Orange 70 Superbird uh, back in the 70s? And his mouth dropped to the ground and uh, he said, Yes, I did. <laughs> so, uh, so we pretty much hit it off ever since then, and I keep in contact with them, and the whole way through the restoration process, I'm going to keep in touch with them. Show them what's going on. I actually on. took the car up. It was 4th of July last year during a party. Come on with me. A 4th of July party to, to and, take uh, the car out. Let's show the trunk while we're here. <laughs> Exhausted. Now, Ricky had a little uh, history of going quickly. Yeah, he did some uh, day two racing with the car, that's for sure. <laughs> Show us some of these pictures here. Okay. This here is who I bought it off of, an Allen Bank PA. Okay. Uh, this is a picture here. These pictures were taken approximately 1981. Uh, it has its original uh, fender tag, build sheets. The car had 37,800 original miles, has the matching numbers, engine and transmission, and uh, the drag slips were in the back seat until the day that I bought the car where the second owner used to bracket race it. Okay. So it's pretty incredible that it still has all the matching numbers drive line and, for it. And you can see all this stuff was left in it. Yeah, you can definitely see it's a, it's a Superbird. I mean, it's got the right window, it's got the 
props for that. All right, keep going. Let's uh, let's open the hood too. Okay. Let's walk and talk. So what happened to this front end? Where's his nose? It, it was wrecked when it was relatively new, and the dealer up in Johnstown, PA, Lightburg, has actually installed the 70 GTX front end, which you see on it now. And it's been like that for pretty much its whole life. So obviously an updated horn. Yes, had to have that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a rare for the beep, the beep beep horn. Right, pure 440 so. commando. Yep. Wow. How excited were you when you knew you were the next owner? Well, it, it took some time. <laughs> we uh, I known about the car since I was a little kid. Um, you know, it, it was a long process to buy and process the car. Uh, they finally just trusted you with it. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to resell or do anything like that. You know, we're going to put them back to the original. All right. So, someday. So. And let's let's fire it up. Let's just show yep. people it run it runs. It runs and drive 130 miles to get here yesterday. 130 miles it drove it's, yesterday. It was hot. <laughs> So we've upgraded the rubber. Put fires right up. Obviously we put some work in the brakes. This sounds great. Tyler, great job. Yep. Alright, give it a rev. Let's let's hear what's up. Sounds like a super bird. All right, we'll shut that one down. All right, let's go over to its friend. This is like a brother-brother combination. These brothers have not been apart. Robbie, go ahead. Let's open the trunk. I see no uh, no key. Uh, we ha we have the standard mechanics key. Okay, which is. Oh, like <laughs> In this case, here it's a that, that did not come with the car in '75. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And this stuff all came, not that, but look at this, the tire with the dry rod in it. That's still the tire in the picture. The teapot. Go ahead, show the pictures of this one. Look, look at this, the, in the, okay. That's crazy. And there is the original Diller ad for this car. Robbie, what'd you think when you knew you were going to be driving this one? I didn't ever think it would happen. Wouldn't have been <laughs> for him, it probably never would have. <laughs> well, that, that's a good friend right there. Tyler, what a great uh, opportunity. Let's take a look at the side of it. Well, it looks like it's been sitting for a while, huh? Come yeah. on back with me, Robbie. So, Robbie, give me a little of the story on this one. This one actually obviously still has its nose. Yeah. So how did this one stay together and the other one didn't? We'll walk and talk. Well, we got 60,000 hard mouth. <laughs> is what we've had. The guy actually uh, bought it at Ligonier, Pennsylvania, at uh, Plymouth Dealer. The guy owned it, uh, had bought it. He worked at the World Trade Center in New York City. Really? He wasn't able to locate the original owner yet. Uh, <laughs> he obviously. <laughs> Got his nose crushed a few times. Well, that, that hood was actually where these cars came from. There was four Superbirds at one time. Is that right? Yes. This was a off the blue one that was wrecked and set in Wimber, PA. Okay. And when the blue one was restored, they stole the hood off Got the petty it. blue one. All right. Well, let's uh, open that up. There we go. Our build, where's our tag? It's at uh, the house. I don't have it, yes. Got it. <laughs> we found two build sheets in the car. I have both of them. And look at that. Look at this. If it wouldn't have been towed down, it would have had a lot more of that. <laughs> look at that. It was towed, so a lot of this came off it. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, let's uh, fire it up, shall we? Now this one, while we got it open, give me just a second. I want to show that interior. Because this one has, uh, and we can close that trunk, Robbie. But let's show the, uh, the date there. We got the beep beep horn. Yep, the talk, 
tack still works and the clock. It's got 60,950 miles on it. The clock still works. Beautiful. Pistol and the grip pistol shifter. Gri yeah, pistol grip. Right amount of pedals. All right, let's yep. fire it. Radio when the car is not running, you can it picks up some stations. That is, that is great. All right, guys. Well, let's hop out. All right. Well, there's only there's only one thing left to do. We'll close that hood, and I think we need to uh, to take this one for a ride and let you drive. That sounds even better. All right, <laughs> let's do this, gentlemen. Yep. Look at the look at the clock is still working. The clock is still working. And the tack. And the tack. Grab it up. So we're in the Barn Find 1975 Superbird Roadrunner, and we're driving. I got Vinny, my co-pilot. Vinny, how are you? Good. Good. Doesn't get much better than this. So we're gonna see what people's reactions are here at Carlisle. At the Carlisle, and it's a little hot today, but uh, clutch pops out at the top dead center just about. Looks like it's our chance. These are original tires, so we are not going to do anything super stupid. <laughs> we just want to make sure we get back. Let's watch some people's reactions as we pull through. What do you think? Thanks. Yep. So we got just a little bit more bonus footage. So when I'm talking with Robbie, first of all, let me say thank you for letting me drive your barn find. What a treat. And uh, you said something interesting though. Tell me what that was. Uh, I said I had, a, I had a Hemi Kudo once that uh, I ended up putting eight tenths of a mile on it after 16 years and nobody ever looked at it. And these cars get more attention than anything. Show that right there. <laughs> just people all standing around you can it. Hardly they get keep run. running at it. Yeah. That is good stuff. That's great. Well, what and a real treat. easy to get ready for the show. <laughs> 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 Takes nothing to get ready. Yes. That's great. All right. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah, all right. Thank you. This is how you do it on my car. 